Afterburner 2 by Sega. This version is from the Sega Ages compilation disc, which is said to be the closest port to the arcade. It's been ported to just about everything, from the Atari ST to cell phones. What made this game sweet was the visuals and the music. The gameplay was repetitive, but when you play in the arcade, sliding into that cockpit and having a flight stick adds a lot to the game. As a matter of fact, it blows without a flight stick. Using the D-pad and holding A to do a barrel roll sucks some of the fun out of the game, and makes the gameplay on the Saturn spastic. The object is pretty self-explanatory. Shoot everyone else, dodge bullets, and don't die. Who the hell needs a storyline? Obviously not Afterburner 2. It's all about kicking some ass. In the home versions, you have the option to have your guns firing at all times, and that helps, especially when you have to use the other buttons to roll and shoot missiles. You do have a limited amount of missiles, but in between stages you can refuel and get stocked up. It's time for... Handsome Tom's Useless Knowledge! Afterburner 2 was originally planned to have a World War II theme and be realistic. That would have been pretty lame. Thank goodness they changed it to a kick-ass modern shooter. Also, in the cutscenes that show you Jet Fighter reloading supplies, you'll see the motorcycle from Hang On. And if you survive long enough, you'll get to see the car from OutRun. Little things like that rock. I miss crazy arcade games like this. They did make a sequel for arcade which features co-op and dogfighting, which sounds pretty badass. It's too bad arcades are dead and I probably won't get to experience it firsthand. That being said, there is a sequel made for the PSP. Now does it kick ass as much as the arcade? Probably not. But for a hardcore Afterburner fan, it's not the worst game on the PSP.